Dr. Agrelo, in closing, let's just go back for a moment to talk about the patient with the osteoporosis issue, and, and where do you see the future for that treatment? Well, uh, all breast cancer patients are at increased risk for osteoporosis, either because of their age, uh, we take away estrogen, or, or because of their treatment. So it's a really important issue. Uh, and although what we've mainly focused on is drug treatment, I, I want to come back to the fact that you can do a lot of things without going on drugs to help your risk of fracture and osteoporosis. Um, that would include um, you know, calcium and vitamin D. Those are clearly important, and you can now actually have a vitamin D level drawn and uh, have it corrected. Um, exercise of any kind. We used to say weight-bearing exercise builds strong bones, but actually the studies have shown any kind of exercise prevents falls, and falls are actually the most common cause of fracture. So any kind of exercise reduces your risk of fracture. Weight-bearing exercise can help build bones. And so those kinds of things, not smoking, actually. Smoking reduces, uh, or increases, sorry, your risk of osteoporosis. If you have a thyroid problem and you're on thyroid medication, you actually have an increased risk of osteoporosis, so you should be followed a little more carefully. And so all of those things should be looked at first before we try a drug. And if you are taking oral uh, calcium supplements with vitamin D, what is now, I mean, you can buy them with 500 milligrams, 600 milligrams, is it a 1,200 milligram a day dosing? Well, the Institute of Medicine just released a report uh, uh, in the last couple of weeks that made us all real confused about exactly how much we should be taking. And so my answer to that is it's not uniform. Everybody's different. The right way to do it, in my opinion, is to have a 25-hydroxy vitamin D level drawn in your serum. So we know with what you're doing at your current baseline what your vitamin D level is, and then adjust the vitamin D supplement based on that as opposed to trying to say there's a one-size-fits-all. Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about when you buy your calcium supplements. Mm -hmm. They uh -huh. come in usually 500 milligrams uh -huh. or 600 milligram doses, and right. they tell you to take two a day. Right. And so women stand at the costly counter there looking at all the mm -hmm. uh, over-the-counter uh, varieties that are available. Is there a recommended dose for calcium? The vitamin D is supplemental in these, and they vary in... Right. So the calcium, you know, for somebody who has some increased risk of bone loss, probably you should be up to 1,200 to 1,500 milligrams a day. It's important to dose it uh, a couple times across the day. If you took it all at once, you'd, you would absorb, you know, at most the equivalent of what the 500 milligram pill would give you. So don't take, if you're taking 1,500 milligrams, three pills all at once. Spread them out. There's calcium carbonate and ca calcium citrate. The calcium citrate's a bit more um, costly. Calcium carbonate is the oyster shell calcium. If you're on an acid blocker, then um, the calcium citrate may actually be better absorbed. But if you're not, if you're not on an acid blocker uh, of any kind, then calcium carbonate is probably uh, just as good. Thank you, Dr. Julie Grelo. It's always great because you have this way of not only talking about clinical things, but really making your discussions quite hands-on for women. And what we just talked about today really is not limited to women with breast cancer. We're talking about bone health in general. That's right. It's important for all of us. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alma.